I am not at all denying that the judgments that the Bible records occurred. I'm not denying those judgments. Uh, I take the whole Bible to be inspired, and those judgments happened. Uh, the question is, how does God judge? That's the issue. How does, it's not whether or not God judges sin and, and, and comes against evil. He'd be evil if he didn't do that. He hates everything that harms people, and sin harms people. But uh, it's, not, it's not whether he judges, it's how he judges. And see, the folks of the Old Testament, where they were at is where everyone else in the ancient Near East was at, and that is they assumed that when God comes against foes and God judges sin or wrongdoing, he, 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 he resorts to violence. In fact, they believed that, and you can see this in all the writings, that, they are, that they're actually praising God when they credit violence to him. The way you exalt God is by making your God look ferocious. And it's like they had a contest. Our God's more ferocious than your God because our God ate up all your warriors. And, and, and they brag on God's ferociousness. And so they ascribe this gross violence to him. And the, the authors of the Old Testament are influenced by their culture, and that's what they do. That's the sin that God has to bear. Uh, in fact, throughout history, including, sadly, most church history, people have assumed that if God is going to judge sin, he's got to resort to violence. Because that's, that's what human rulers do. If, if a human ruler is going to crack down on, on wrongdoers, they resort to violence. Well, so God must do the same thing. I remember as I shared last week or the week before, you know, in, in Psalms 50, God says, you always think that I'm just like you. And that's where we go wrong. If the cross reveals anything, it's that God is not just like us. If the cross reveals anything, it reveals that he's not at all like the God that we, the kind of gods we expect to exist. Uh, and so instead of assuming that we know ahead of time how God judges sin, we ought to go back to the cross, which is, contains all the wisdom of God. And let, let, let God teach us how he judges sin. The cross is a judgment on all the sin of the world. Jesus stood in our place as a sinner and bore the death consequences that are inherent in all sin. And that's the judgment of God. That's the, the wrath of God. It's when, when you suffer the consequences of your sin. And, and it was very violent. The cross is a violent judgment of God. You look at Jesus, and what you're seeing is that, 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 man, a tremendous amount of violence. And he was beaten and crucified. It was a violent judgment of God. And yet, as I, as I stared at that cross saying, teach me, teach me, teach me, I guess it was nine years ago or so, I all of a sudden realized that God wasn't the one who was violent. A lot of violence in that judgment, but none of it was done by God. All the violence that was done to Jesus was done by humans operating on their own free volition, and they were under the influence of powers, principalities and powers. And they're the ones who engaged in violence towards Jesus, and that was the death consequences of the sin of the world. And since we're, we're uh, 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 to read it, the whole Bible through the lens of the cross, we should read it knowing that. The only thing God did when Jesus came under judgment is he allowed it to happen. He, he, delivered, he withdrew protection from Jesus and let Jesus suffer the violence that was in other people's hearts and that was in the heart of the principalities and powers. So we read uh, phrases like this uh, in Romans. Uh, he says, He who did not spare his son, but delivered him over for us, how will he not freely give us all things? He delivered him over. That's all he did. He delivered him over to violent people and principalities and powers, and Jesus suffered accordingly. Or Romans 4 talks about Jesus being delivered over for our transgressions. And you find this phrase used a lot. He was delivered over. That's the only action that the Father took with regard to Jesus. He didn't lift a finger towards Jesus. That was all done by other principalities and powers. And this is why Jesus cries out on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's standing on the inside of our sin and on the inside of our curse. And to be cursed simply means that you're separated from God. You're alienated from God. So he's, he's, he's suffering that. But it shows you the one thing that God did. He withdrew. He withdrew. Now Jesus is on his own, and he suffers the consequences for the sins of the world. So when we read the Bible, knowing that you know, the, the, this is what the wisdom of God does, we should know that God doesn't have to resort to violence when he judges sinners. There is a terrible judgment that people fall under. But it's not God who brings about the terribleness. It's God who allows it. Now, one might think here that... that, that God's still responsible. It's like, well, listen, if, if God withdraws and leaves a person or a people group on their own and knows that others are going to inflict violence on them the way they did on Jesus, well, then isn't he still responsible for it? Maybe it's like, uh, you know, God holding a pit bull. The pit bull wants to bite you, and I know the pit bull wants to bite you, but I let the pit bull go, and the pit bull bites you. Well, then, clearly, it'd be wrong for me to say, hey, I didn't bite you. It was my pit bull. 
No, I, I'd be responsible. Is that what's going on when God withdraws? And the answer is no. Think of it like this. Um, it, 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 some of you, I know, have had loved ones, and maybe you yourself have been in a spot where you, th- that have been addicted to some kind of substance thing. And, and, and you, you intervene in their life, and you try to f- help them and prevent, uh, keep them from getting arrested, and you pick up the mess and, 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 and trying to spare them the pain of the decisions they're making. But there could come a point where you're enabling them, right? And, and, and at some point, you're actually har- harming them by trying to help them. And the, what you've got to do is let them fall. You've got to withdraw. And it's painful to watch. I've been in this situation. I've got to let you go. And you're going to make a mess of your life. And, and, and you're going to have to hit bottom. But it's the only way. I hope you learn this. It's the only way you're going to get off this stuff. That's kind of what God does. Uh, you know, sin is a matter of pushing God away at his heart. Sin is saying, leave me alone. Uh, and, and since God is life, to push God away is to choose death. And there's a lot of verses that say that. They who reject me love death, says in Proverbs 8. Uh, so it's choosing death. But God in his mercy stays involved to protect us from the consequences of our sin. And, and he does it to give us space to turn, to repent, to learn. Hopefully learn without the pain. But there can come a point where God can see that he's just enabling us. He's just letting us get deeper and deeper. Uh, we, we, we interpret uh, the, this, uh, his protection as though there are no consequences for sin. Like again, Psalms 50 says, when you did these things and I was silent, you thought I was just like you, that I was okay with it. I'm not. So also, you, you think that I'm okay with this and you're just getting deeper and deeper in it. I gotta, I gotta let you go. I, I gotta let you fall. And he does it with a grieving heart and with a hope that we'll get it the hard way where we couldn't get the merciful way. But he's got no other choice. There are circumstances where God has no other choice but to withdraw and let us suffer the consequences of our sin. That's how God judges. That's how God judges. 